Today, we are going to talk about how to use a basic multimeter. All of us out in the field call this a multimeter, but it's really not a multimeter. Fluke calls this a tester. If you were to go to Fluke's website and look up multimeter, something like this is going to pop up. So this is technically a multimeter. If you go look for a tester, you're gonna find this. But again, we all call this a multimeter. So for this video, I'm just gonna keep calling this a multimeter. This meter has voltage, amperage, and resistance. It does continuity as well. So technically there's four different functions to it. How do you use it? The first setting we're gonna talk about is voltage. This is a 600 volt meter, which means you can only test it on voltage systems up to 600 volts. All right, so how you test for voltage is you always have to test between two things. So this is telling you that there's 249 volts of potential between this hot and the other hot. The neutral is a center point in the system between both of these phases. So you should get half that voltage between one hot and neutral. And we do, we get 125. Between this hot and neutral, we get 124. As long as you're like around 120 volts from hot to neutral and around 120 volts from the other hot to neutral, and you've got 240-ish uh, between hot and hot, then everything should be okay. I always test between the two phases, then I test one phase to neutral, the other phase to neutral, and then I test each phase to ground. I got 120 there, 120 there, and then I test neutral to ground. You want to make sure that it says zero. You don't ever want to have a difference of potential between your neutral and your ground. At every service, you want to always make sure that the ground and the neutral are bonded at the service. If you ever see a fluctuation, if you ever see like 50 volts between your neutral and your ground, you know that there's a huge problem and you need to get that fixed ASAP. Um, there's a lot of hazards that that could cause, but that's voltage in a nutshell. So amperage, you're testing on one wire how much current is going through. And you use this little uh, divot inside of here and there's a line on it. There's a line here and a line here. And as long as you just line your wire up with that line, it'll read how much current's going through it. All right, so how do we test for amperage? Um, amperage inside of this little jaw, there's two little lines that go across here. And that's the point where you need to uh, be taking your measurement. So right now I'm testing on black phase on this breaker. It says 0.3 amps, which is very little. If anything, there might be like a light bulb on that. Red phase will do the same thing. There's 0.4. I'm gonna turn a load on so that you can see what it looks like once current starts flowing through a wire. Go ahead. All right, shut it off. All right, so what just happened is the current spiked all of a sudden. We just turned a fan on in the shop. Current spiked really high, and then it started to come back down to more of a nominal level. Um, and that is pretty much any time you turn on any motor, uh, that's gonna happen. It's gonna spike, have a whole bunch of inrush current, and then it's gonna go back down and kind of balance out. So for any large wires, you're gonna use something like this. If you're checking any like service entrance conductors or feeders that are coming into a panel, you need one of these that you can clamp onto larger wire and take a reading. There's two little lines in there, so you want to make sure the center of your wire meets up with those lines to get the most accurate reading. And the third thing is resistance. So the little ohms symbol is going to show you resistance values. If you were to test a wire and see how, between this point and that point, how much resistance is there to the current? Like basically how much traffic is there in the car I'm driving? Okay, so what I've done is I set up three different 500 foot rolls of THHN. So this is 1500 feet of wire. Still probably not a lot of resistance, a few ohms, but it's at least gonna show you that you're gonna start getting values rather than it just saying, oh well. You know, when we, when we hit this, actually it says one, means there's only an ohm of resistance. So with these touching, it shows one. So when I touch these together, you still hear the tone, but this thing says three ohms. So it's a little bit higher resistance because there's more material that it has to go through. And the last thing is continuity. So continuity is also on the resistance setting. So when you touch the leads of this tester together, it makes an audible noise when there's a complete loop, a complete circuit from the tester to the tester. If you touch this to this, 
you get a tone, right? Basically, I'm sending out a signal on the black lead that's going to one side of this coil. The signal's making it all the way through that wire out to here. So when I touch this, the signal completes and goes all the way back to the meter. I got a full loop. Okay, so I know that that wire is not broken. All right, so that's it.